This is a custom div board hardware design that features a Raspberry Pi Pico 2 or RP2350 and an ESP32 C3 with chip antenna. In this video, we will go through the hardware design of the RP2350 part of this board. You will learn what it takes to build your own custom RP2350 PCB project. We will also write some demo firmware examples to bring up our board using the Pico C SDK and Arduino C++. Without further ado, let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. More on them later in the video. And let's take a look at what we are going to build today. Here is uh, our dev board. It has two USB ports, one for each microcontroller, the RP2350 and the ESP32C3. Here is the power supply section for the RP2350. It's external flash memory. Each microcontroller has uh, its own LED, uh, like this one and this one, and an RGB LED. This one for the RP and this one for the ESP. Uh, in addition to a reset and boot button for each microcontroller. Reset and boot for the RP and reset and boot for the ESP. And there is an SPI bus connecting both microcontrollers and all of the free IO pins are exposed to those pin headers. And that's all about it. We don't have anything on the back side. We will discuss the RP2350 part of this board in this video and we will leave the ESP32 with the antenna part to the next video and now let's move on to our project article I will leave a link to this project article in the description of this video uh, it has all the details that you need to follow along and build your own board so you will need to check it out and we will start with an overview for the RP2350 microcontroller it's a quad core microcontroller however you can't use all of the four cores at once you can use the dual core arm cortex m33 processors or the dual core risk 5 processors it's either arm or risk 5 in operation it has a decent set of peripherals like uh, pwm serial communication edc timers etc and it comes in four variants the rp2350 a and b uh, don't have an internal flash memory but the rp2350 4 a and b those has an internal uh, flash memory and the difference between a and b variants in each uh, line is the package size the a variant has 30 gpio pins compared to 48 for the b variant so the b variants have more gpio pins and also double the analog channel pins uh, of course it would be better to use the rp2350 4b for many reasons however it was not in stock at jlc pcb back then when i designed this board uh, however it's now uh, available as you can see here the rp2354 b the stock is fluctuating and it's pretty much on the low side for my board i used the rp2350 b which requires an external flash memory uh, but it has more gpio pins it's always nice to have more pins to use and this is what i have used in my project uh, this is a brief comparison between the rp2040 and the rp2350 uh, i won't bore you with these details you can take a look at this uh, table what i can say is that the rp2350 is a more capable version of the rp2040 in all aspects across the board and at this point i highly encourage you to take a look at my previous video for the rp2040 hardware design which is a very good introduction to hardware design design for the RP2040 and firmware development for the Raspberry Pi Pico microcontrollers in general. So it's very beneficial to take a look at that previous video. Uh, and let's move on to the next uh, section. Uh, here are the guidelines and documents that you will need to develop your own RP2350 based PCB project. Uh, we will need the microcontrollers datasheet. Uh, we will need the Raspberry Pi Pico 2 datasheet, this new board. And we will need the hardware design guidelines for the RP2350. And in this document specifically, we will find a minimal design around the RP2350. And near the end of this document, we will find two versions of the schematic for the A and B variants of the microcontroller. This is the schematic for the A variant. And this is the B variant of the RP2350. And this is the reference design schematic for the minimal system around the RP2350B microcontroller and this is what I have used to build my own board so let's get back to our project article and let's go through the schematic design piece by piece the main power source for this board is the USB port which I have two of them uh, one for the Pi Pico and another for the ESP32 uh, so I have to do this uh, kind of o-ring using these uh, diodes and the USB 5 volts is regulated down to 3.3 using this LDO and we will use the 3.32 power of our microcontroller 
Uh, let's take a closer look. Uh, this is the quad spy flash uh, memory section. And this is the boot push button. And the other uh, push button here for the reset function. It's connected to the uh, run pin. And here is our 12 megahertz crystal oscillator connected to those uh, pins. And those are the USB pins with 27 ohm termination resistors. These resistors need to be uh, placed very close to the uh, microcontroller pins, not to the USB connector. Here is the debug port serial wire clock and serial wire I.O. those two pins here and the rest of the pins all of these GPIO pins are connected to the I.O. pin header uh, this and this those two uh, headers and these are the coupling capacitors for the 3.3 voltage rail and the 1.1 core voltage the 1.1 core voltage is generated using a switching mode power supply integrated in the microcontroller itself and those are the regulator pins the feedback pin the V input and the inductor output it requires an external 3.3 micro Henry uh, external inductor with a bypassing capacitor and you are good to go and this is a bit different from what we have seen previously in the RP2040 PCB project and here is the schematic let's open a new tab uh, we did also use an LDO to regulate down the 5 volts of the USB to 3.3 voltage on the RP2040 there was an internal LDO so the 3.3 voltage was feeding this pin which is the V regulator input and the internal LDO generates this VREG out which is 1.1 volts uh, for the core and externally we will connect the 1.1 output from the V regulator to the uh, DVDD so it was a bit uh, more simple to do uh, and that's pretty much all what we have to do in our schematic design to have a functional RP2350 uh, microcontroller uh, after completing this schematic design uh, I had to do the same for the ESP32 C3 then I had to move to the next step which is the PCB uh, layout and routing uh, nothing here was really special uh, you need to place the decoupling capacitors near the power supply pins for the both microcontrollers uh, the spy lines here are very short point to point connections uh, we have two USB differential pairs the quad spy flash memory is also as close as possible to the microcontroller and that's all about it and at that point I have generated the fabrication files and went over to JLC PCB to place my order and this is our sponsor time JLC PCB is one of the largest PCB manufacturers in China. They offer amazing quality services for affordable and competitive prices. You can get up to four layers PCB, five pieces for only two dollars. This is 10 by 10 centimeters and up to eight layers for uh, five by five centimeters PCB for only two dollars as well. They also offer flexible PCBs very affordable PCB assembly service with a huge stock of parts that you can get for very affordable prices as well. They also have a high quality 3D printing service and CNC machining service and a huge stock of mechanical parts that you can use for your projects. Register for a new account using the link in my description and you will get a 60 US dollars discount coupon that you can use for your projects. And now let's upload our Gerber file. As you can see it has picked up our design. It's a four layer board 60 by 60 millimeters uh, I will leave all of these uh, default uh, options. I will enable the assembly. Uh, assembly on the top side only. I will assemble two boards. Uh, and this is everything I uh, I believe. I will remove the order marker here from the silk screen. And move to the next step. Then move to the next. And here we will uh, upload the BOM file and the component positions file. BOM. Positions. And proceed. The system has detected our parts. Uh, I'll click on next then I will have this message uh, previously like maybe five months ago I had this message uh, it required me to use a specific uh, inductor and a specific uh, oscillator for the RP2350 and there was no option to skip this message uh, it prevented me from placing uh, the order uh, it turned out to be that you need to have this polarized inductor uh, do you see this dot near the inductor here it's uh, indicator for the polarity this inductor needs to be polarized and it needs to be a specific uh, part number you, you need to use this and this uh, abracon uh, crystal oscillator I don't, I don't know why the, this specific uh, oscillator uh, but i had to change both uh, parts in order to place my order uh, however what i have seen now uh, that has been changed that you need to check this and continue now you can continue if you are not using these parts uh, however uh, it's recommended by the data sheet i believe you need to use this specific uh, inductor and that's what i have uh, done here uh, if you notice this uh, small dot this is the polarity indicator for the inductor i have changed the footprint for the inductor and the part number for the oscillator
and I was able to place my order uh, and that was the case in February uh, 2025 uh, however now you can uh, skip over this message and place your order anyway uh, but of course it's not recommended to do this anyway and after placing my order and waiting for the delivery uh, here is my boards after receiving them from GLC PCP the board is looking very good I did some uh, testing and checking for any uh, potential uh, issue I didn't find anything and we can now start uh, testing and building some projects to bring up our board to get started with the Raspberry Pi Pico CSDK firmware development in embedded uh, C you can use a single installer file to install all of the tool chain required to build uh, projects in using the Pico CSDK uh, which I have explained in this uh, previous uh, project here in the same video that I kept uh, telling you about and it turned out to be an even easier way if you haven't installed the Pico CSDK already uh, you can just install this uh, Visual Studio Code extension here is uh, the link and it's an official extension from uh, Raspberry Pi uh, and what it does it's, it makes everything a lot more simple than uh, what we have done previously and this is what I'm going to use and show you today uh, let's create our first uh, LED blinking example for the RP2350 uh, and let's open Visual Studio Code go to the extensions and here is the Raspberry Pi Pico project creator you can use uh, this extension to create a new project uh, select create new C++ uh, project and here are the settings for the project creator and generator you select the board type we are using a uh, Pico 2 uh, by default it will build for the ARM cores but you can check this to use the RISC-5 uh, dual core uh, processors uh, you can enable or disable any of these uh, hardware uh, features uh, you can also route the stdio functions like uh, printf to usb cdc or uh, to the uart and this is pretty much everything you need to accelerate the project creation uh, process uh, you can also use uh, ready-made examples by raspberry by uh, pico csdk there are some built-in examples i can use this button and it will uh, allow me to use any of these examples there are so many examples that you can uh, use like the new pixel RGB uh, that we will use in a moment uh, it's WS to it yes this is the example you will find an MPU 6050 example you, uh, you will find a lot of examples actually here in case you don't want to start from scratch if you want to start from scratch you'll select custom give your project a name and uh, destination folder select these settings and you are good to go uh, we will make a LED blinking demo we are not using any of these uh, peripherals we are not using the STDIO and I will create a new project and here is our new project uh, folder it's a very simple example we are defining an output uh, GPIO pin which is uh, pin 25 on which we have an output LED connected to the pin 25 of the uh, Raspberry Pi Pico which is right here so let's get back to our project and uh, we are turning it on and off every 100 millisecond that's all about it we will compile the code the build process is done and here is our uh, project directory i'll connect the board to uh, a usb port in my pc and we are now connected uh, in the project directory we will go to the build outputs and here is the uf2 uh, firmware file and now we need to operate in the bootloader mode so what i'm going to do is i will hold the boot button and click on the reset button once and release it while I'm holding the boot then I will release the boot button and here we go here is our RP2350 all I need to do is just drag and drop this UF2 file to our uh, RP2350 device and voila this is a better footage for the same demo example moving to the next demo example we will uh, do USB CDC serial print and it's also a very simple demo example we are just pr printing a string and uh, adding a delay of one second uh, do you remember the option of uh, routing the SDIO functions to the USB or UART this is what I have selected while uh, creating this project I have selected to route the SDIO output to the USB CDC uh, this is what it, uh, it makes you can actually create the project from scratch and add this uh, on your own you need to add uh, those two lines in the cmakelists.txt uh, file this this line disables the UART from the STIO and this line enables the uh, STIO output to the USB CDC this is all what we need in order to do the printf and have the output uh, through the USB port I will compile this uh, project as well bring up our uh, board connect the USB and uh, start in bootloader mode 
here we are let's get to the output uh, files uh, and this is the build output uh, directory here is our uf2 file i will drag and drop it here to the device let's open any uh, serial terminal maybe this arduino i will select the port uh, com26 i will open serial monitor and now we are receiving our serial messages exactly as expected and let's do another demo test uh, this time for the new pixel rgb led uh, i will use the built-in example in the pico csdk for the new pixel uh, rgb using a pio state machine on top of which i will add a very simple rgb color changing uh, effect here is the demo code uh, and again i will build uh, this uh, project then reset the microcontroller into bootloader mode and here is the uf2 uh, output file i will drag and drop here here we go now we have seen how to use the pico csdk to develop firmware for our uh, rp2350 let's now move on to use the arduino uh, ide uh, which allows us to develop in arduino c++ language and gives us access to all of the arduino libraries uh, here is what you need to do in your arduino ide uh, to add uh, the Raspberry Pi Pico core so you can build projects for the RP2040 and also the RP2350 go to the Arduino IDE preferences additional uh, boards manager URL and paste in this uh, URL then go to the tools board manager and search for the Pico and install this uh, Pico core now you can use the Arduino IDE to develop firmware for Raspberry Pi Pico microcontrollers and here we are in Arduino IDE and this is the demo uh, test that I will use I will enable the USB CDC serial print I will uh, set this uh, GPIO pin as output this is the LED output pin and I will drive the LED pin high and low and send serial messages uh, to check both the GPIO and the serial print and here are the settings I'm using the generic RP2350 board is selected the variant is B variant the flash size I'm using is 60 megabyte no uh, file system and those are the other uh, settings as you can see the port is not uh, appearing and let's connect it to the USB port it's still running the previous example and if you can see here the COM port selected is the serial port which is not the USB bootloader so I will reset the board into bootloader mode Uh, and here we are uh, we don't need this using arduino ide we will go to tools port and now we have this uf2 board i will select this and upload my uh, example and the firmware is now uploaded to the board uh, as you can see the rgb led is still uh, preserving the last state it was on so i will do a power recycle and now everything is okay as you can see the led is blinking and if we open the serial terminal we will get this error message so okay we need to select the correct port which is com25 and open the serial terminal and here are the led states um, these uh, board rates doesn't mean in anything because we are using the usb cdc so it, it, it doesn't make any sense you can change the board rate and it will not affect the the actual messages that we are receiving and that's all about it before concluding this video let's do one more test for communication between the rp2350 and the esp32 c3 microcontrollers in this demo i have uploaded a firmware example to the esp32 c3 to act as a web server hosting a simple web page to allow the user to select an rgb color and the data is sent over spi bus to the rp2350 which writes the data to a new pixel rgb led which was also a successful test as you have seen and now what's next first of all we will have to cover the hardware design and bring up the testing for the other half of this pcb project which is the esp32 c3 part with the chip antenna and such and this will be our next video then we will check out this 24 volts 24 ampere dc dc step down buck converter project and in the meantime i'm expecting to receive two more pcbs that we will also cover here on this channel very soon uh, first of which is this stm32 audio synthesis and uh, dsp board and the other one is this uh, xilinx Arctic 7 uh, fpga audio video processing board it has an audio codec an audio section it has a camera input for the video and it has a hdmi output uh, and so many onboard peripherals and sensors uh, to play with if you find this interesting please consider subscribing to the channel and turn on the notification bell to not miss any of the new video releases if you can also share any video from this channel in any relevant social group community or forum then please do 
because the current YouTube situation has become more like swimming against a very strong current, especially with this type of content. So anything would really help break through these algorithmic barriers. I hope you have found this video helpful or inspiring in any way. I'm signing out and I will catch you in the next one.